Hey, my name is Javi, and we're looking at the Big Firebird Magic Henshin. A set of five transformable figures that combine into a bigger... Why? Food. Big Firebird should sound familiar. Nice. It's like an unholy crossover between Sailor Moon, Voltron, and porn. Speaking of unholy crossovers, the Joker, of all people, is coming to State of Survival, the sponsor of this video. State of Survival is a zombie-themed survival strategy mobile game. It's free to play and available in both the Apple and Google App Stores. Boom. The wealthy industrialist Klein established the company Gigacorp, which unleashed catastrophe upon the world. As the survivor of the disaster, you'll rebuild your home, fight against the enemy, end Klein's conspiracy, and eventually save humankind from uncertain doom. Also, the Joker is here. From now through January, the Joker laughs his way through the apocalypse with custom weapons and skills, a custom storyline, unique gameplay, and in-game events. Like the Arena of Doom, where players compete with other players, both PvP and PvE, and fight against laughing zombies, a new type of zombie created by the Joker's laughing gas. And there's the joke in the box, the Joker's mystery box, which you gotta find in the world map, and send your troops out to retrieve survival resources. Just keep in mind that you gotta upgrade to level six to unlock all the joker related stuff so while you enjoy the grind you can grow and design your settlement experience the riveting story sure to be filled with twists and turns and of course fight against hordes of zombies while exploring unknown areas check out the link in the description and use my promo code jobby sos Help me. To redeem a starter pack that includes 300 bio caps, a rare hero, Rusty, one epic search map, 50,000 food, 50,000 wood, 50,000 metal, and 1,000 chief EXP. The number of starter packs is limited, first come, first serve. So you should download State of Survival now and experience this limited time Joker crossover event. <laughs> All of these figures have a port that can take any standard figure stand, not included. I'm using a Good Smile Company simple stand. However, a Bandai Tomashi Nation Stack 5 stand would also work. Number one, the painting and sculpting on Scarlet Sonic is awesome. She's got an appealing design full of personality, but she is worryingly human. Why though? From what I can tell, the Magic Henshin line is Big Firebird's take on the magical girl genre. Usually involves a team who turn into magical superheroes. But instead of gaining frilly outfits or psychological trauma, these girls transform into transforming robots. Henshin means transform if my Nipponese is correct. There's a bunch of weirdly high quality promotional artwork. Is it some kind of pitch for a show? A comic? An arrest warrant? Weird concept, but the execution is strong. At least visually. Out of the box, her beautiful spread was loose. So I had to get in there and pump my fluid. Kiki's or Dr. D-Stars are good options. Or if you're really stupid, super glue. And you can see me performing that process on my second channel, Jobby2. Links in the description if you want to see how the sausage gets made. For a figure that doesn't have real feet, she's surprisingly articulated. Not a masterpiece style figure by any means, but there's enough articulation here to get her into some fun poses. Above average posability, which can be complemented by a variety of accessories. In addition to her, somewhat bland smile, you get a cheeky grin, and you get a blank face. The horror. Horror, don't get me twisted, is justified. At first, I thought these were run-of-the-mill stickers, but they don't seem to peel off. So I'm assuming they're water slide decals, and who cares? I'm not gonna use them, and why would I? It's literally just a copy of her eyes. No difference. And you get another sheet which is stuck to the backing. Epic. You also get alternate hands, but be careful when handling these. The ball joints are super tiny and thin, like my pee-pee. I only got four jokes, get used to it. Grabby hands, which allows her to hold this gas nozzle, and a pair of fists, which lets her hold these sabers. They look like her little ears, because they are. So technically, she's supposed to look like this when she's wielding her weapons. Bald. I don't like it. Logic be damned, the ears stay on during slicing. Number two, finna make me act up. Thunderlight is number two for a reason. 
poo poo. That's a little harsh, but she is my least favorite of the set. She just looks disproportionate. I want to talk. First off, she's got these ugly, perfect transformation hands. You can and should switch them out for these hands that actually look like hands. Significant improvement, but her arms are still too short. Also, her hair isn't as convincing as Scarlet Sonic's bike seat ponytail. These pigtails look more like head tits. And that's because they are. We'll get into that later. At least their face sculpt is pretty dang good. Again, you can replace her face. Looks great. And another blank face. Only this time, the decals aren't completely useless. It's cool that you get the option for customization. But who cares? Speaking of customization, you might want to paint this lump on her nose. It's supposed to be an anime tough guy bandage, but it's unpainted. As is her whole chest. What? On a totally unrelated note. Sure, the painting and sculpting is awesome and the plastic quality does not feel cheap, but god damn! Toys are getting expensive, aren't they? Makes you want to cut your losses and get the hell out of this hobby. But who am I kidding? I'm too much of a man baby to give up on toys. I'll also never feel the touch of a real woman ever again. Links in the description, by the way. This stubby short stack's got some disappointingly limited articulation. You don't even get a waist swivel. Her chesticles make up for that though. And ankles. What ankles? Hidden joint at the shoulder was a bit floppy. And again, I tightened it up with some white stuff. You can still get some decent poses out of her if you have her on a stand. You can make up for the lack of articulation with these lightning effect parts. But they don't quite adhere to the hand as much as I would like. You could just flick them off. But man, they do a hell of a job at giving her punches impact. And you get a few extra parts for the transformation. We'll get into that later. Put some fucking pants on. Number three and four. Take a seat over there. Gemini Wings are my favorite figures of the set. They don't have individual names as far as I know, so I'll just call them Pink and Blue. Despite being virtually identical figures, the character design is so strong that you can tell their personalities at a glance. Of course, my poses help, as do their excellent face sculpts, which can get even more expressive. <laughs> Just too bad that Pink's got a scuff on her tongue. How'd that get there? Anything I say can be used in a court of law. Again, some blank faces, some decals, and you'll definitely want to plug them into a stand. They're gigantic ponytails, more like horse tails, weigh them down significantly. They could stand up on their own, but only if you use the hair as a third leg. Mm, which this literally is. It's even got a foot at the end. I wonder why. Display them on the stand and you can take full advantage of their excellent posability. The best of the set. However, the chest, or lack thereof, would get dragged down by the weight of the hair. So again, some joint stuff does the trick. The shoulder joint seems to be attached to the neck, which could get annoying. Impressive articulation. They're essentially Figma figures and surprisingly solid for such small joints. Be careful with the hands though. They're a softer plastic than everything everything else. You get a pair of heart-making hands, and that looks great with this sound system, microphone included. Rocking that Japanese idol aesthetic. And you get a pair of hearts which don't seem to plug into anything, but the girls can cradle them. M and H for Magic Henshin, or H and M for... help me. Number G1. Can you shut up about Transformers? Scarlet Dragon. On the packaging, this section is flipped up, but I suggest you fold that down. Now it's a satisfying little box. And that's it. The turret can't move, the treads don't work, and worst of all, nothing snaps in. As long as you don't move anything out of position, it's a fun little chibi tank. Reminds me of the metal slug, just with a longer barrel and a pair of tits. I'm not too big on how small these girls are, but I guess they make for some very pricey desktop if you have the space, which I don't because I've lost control of my life. Here's Figma Modic Economy, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, Transform Element OP Leader, my previous video, Eris Coulter. Oh wait, no, my previous video was a fail box, which most of you didn't watch, thanks a lot. And of course, my previous Big Firebird review, nice. It's clear to me that Big Firebird has a passion for transforming robots. Just wish they had passion for the actual transformation. Parts forming, fuck off. Scarlet Sonic's bite mode. It's pretty good, if 
somewhat disturbing. But I don't like that the arms don't plug in anywhere. Come on. This ain't the most solid mode. I'd also complain about the lack of a kickstand, but her thick tires allows her to stand up on her own. They can't spin freely, though. That's no fun. But what is fun is that you can get another figure to ride her. Hmm. Let's move on before I get swatted. This isn't in the instructions, but plug in this included steering wheel to flesh it out. She desperately needs it because Thunderlight's vehicle mode doesn't look great without it or in general. This vague sci-fi go-kart with an ass is just kind of lame. And you can put another ass on that ass and that's just ass. Also, the face covering doesn't like to connect, giving you a movie Megatron situation. I smell you! That's another potential use for the blank face. You can plug it in and not be distracted by her eyes while you roast her. I don't hate this mode, but it's yet another reason why she's my least favorite of the set. And don't look too deep into the... exhaust. <laughs> The sound system becomes the cockpit, and again, it's not in the instructions. You could also plug in the mic, but that just looks like they put a microphone in the rest. The Gemini Wings bomber mode is fantastic. The cutest, most brightly colored weapon of war I've ever seen. This is the future liberals want. Not only does this look great, the transformation process was fun and super satisfying. But admittedly, I have a bias for symmetrical talking. Leave a like if you get that. Sorry. There's still the issue of some parts not quite connecting, the front just needs some more tabs, and the little lady legs don't plug in at all, so position them however the hell you want. At least this mode actually looks like something, as opposed to nothing. If you could afford only one magic henshin girl, this would be the one to get. Two girls, one mode, but you know what I mean. This mode solidifies the twins as my favorite of the set. Can't say the same about... And here we have Scarlet Dragon's dragon mode? That's a stretch. The actual head sculpt is pretty good, should have had an opening jaw. And these sharp little nubs are supposed to be his arms. Pathetic. While this is undeniably a fake mode, it still has its charm. It also has the excuse of being a glorified accessory pack. I don't hate it. I don't hate any of these figures, though I still wish they were bigger. Here's Madoka Godzilla Prime, Eris Coulter, and Big Firebird's superior alternate mode. Loose joint parts forming, questionably horny designs. What other war crimes can Big Firebird commit? A combination that sucks.
have a new haircut. Took a long ass break between modes. And here we have the combined mode, as presented in the concept art and promotional art. It sucks. She's disproportionate. The titties are way too low down. Got that MP51 RC look someday. And while she's fairly poseable, it ain't worth it. She explodes at the slightest touch. And to top it off, this mode isn't in the instructions. Shout out to the random tweets I found with photos I could reference. It's as if Big Firebird didn't want you to see this mode. And I have no way to confirm this, but I think the negative reception to this mode is why Scarlet Dragon was designed in the first place. It's an accessory pack that allows you to form the better combined mode. The only combined mode as far as I'm concerned. Make sure you plug in this adapter piece, not in the instructions, so you can attach it to a stand. You'll need it. Now this combined mode, doesn't have her own name as far as I know, is awesome. Kind of a shame that Big Firebird couldn't stick to their original concept. That artwork is great, but what we have instead looks really cool. She's got that old school combiner aesthetic with the mismatched colors. More Power Rangers or Voltron than Kang Toys Thunder King. Need to get back to that series. The militaristic, literally tanky upper half provides a harsh but hilarious contrast to the prissy frilly boots that she's rocking, which are dead. Definitely made for walking, but not for standing. Her feet are really tiny relative to the rest of her body, which I'm sure some of you will enjoy. I personally prefer them bigger and dirtier. It's completely possible to stand her up on her own, but save yourself the suffering, cause lord knows we got a lot of it, and plug her into a stand. Weirdly enough, she stands up better when she's in a dynamic pose, rather than a neutral one like this. And thankfully, the posability is pretty good, on par with Scarlet Sonic solo, except now her back's full of a bunch of... Try to ignore the spragged corpse. None of this plugs in, by the way, again, so position it however you want. Also, her booties have booties. Put in the calves. No way swivel since Thunder Thighs didn't have one. Now that I think about it, Thunder Light being the core of the combined mode explains her weird proportions. But don't worry about that. Simply spread the cheeks. And that unlocks the chest. Just so long as you don't mind her floating ass. You know, I could never get the cheeks fully closed. Like your mom's. And that ain't the only thing that doesn't want to stay put. Forget about the visor. Completely. Give up. Pops right off if you breathe on it wrong. And another issue... This connection here, garbage. Not the boots. Surprisingly, that connection is solid. These pegs just do not want to stay plugged in. Even after I tried to thicken the peg up with some super glue, you can kind of see it there. No dice. Maybe I need more super glue. Maybe I should have just taken the L. Or maybe the engineering shouldn't have been so dependent on one tiny peg. This is a poseable combiner that I assume they want us to play with, right? Something like this needs stronger connections and stronger joints, especially at the legs. They could have even given us some ratchet joints somewhere. It should be in their budget. Ugh! At least the chest connection is solid. And thanks to Scarlet Dragon, you get some combined mode specific accessories. You can see a pair of them on her shoulders, the knives. And if you switch out her hands, she can grab this hammer. I already like Scarlet Dragon's head sculpt, but as a hammer, it looks even better. And the speaker system can convert into a shield. Not as impressive, and it's a bit loose. Solid set of weapons regardless. And on the topic of accessories, I can't emphasize enough how annoying the parts forming is. I mean, Thunderlight gets completely wrecked in this mode. It is helpful that you get these Figma style baggies to put everything in. Another annoying thing besides my existence is the visor. Not that, but the fact that it's a red visor on a red head it makes it blend all together in a red mess. Basics of color composition, come on. But you do get another visor, which you already saw, and a bunch of parts that allows her to ascend into her super mode. Or piper mode, whatever you want to call it, who cares? Here we have.
have the super hyper girl boss mode, which is the best mode of the set next to the bomber. If I was going to display this set, it would be like this. Yeah, I said if. I'm running out of space. Give me a break. And if the effect parts look sharp, that's because they are. Ah! Yeah, be especially careful with the visor. Not only is it sharp, these parts are really thin. Wouldn't take much effort to snap something off. At least it actually stays on her face. And be especially, especially careful with the wings. They look so cool, but that hook at the end can do some major damage just like a real woman. And if you're wondering, yes, these are compatible with the bike mode and also Gemini Wings Bomber mode. Very nice. These things give this mode so much presence, which she desperately needs because she ain't that big. Madoka Godzilla Prime, Eris Coulter, nice. And another combiner that has way too many problems for the price. Stay tuned. This set in all of its modes has a lot to love, but not at these prices. And I have to emphasize this before you guys make shit up because you are really good at that. I don't hate this figure. I actually love the concept. And I'm not just saying that because Big Firebird themselves follow me on Twitter. I'm still looking forward to what they do next. Nice was nice and I'm getting her sister. And there's even artwork for future Magic Henshin concepts which look really cool. I'm just hoping going forward there's improved connections, improved joints, something that I don't feel the need to fix. And you know I will continue to pay top dollar. I am really bad with my money. Thanks again, Dad. State of survival. But what I cannot forgive... The dragon has an ass. Eh, I missed the boat on that joke, it's December. My dick is already numb. <laughs>